Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to look at some of the residual properties and, and residual plots. So this is the model that we're assuming, y is equal to x beta plus some error. Now the beta is a vector of k plus, k plus 1 by 1 unknown constants. We're assuming that the error term follows a multivariate normal with mean zero and sigma uh, covariance matrix sigma squared i. Now, note that this is the error term. So if we subtract that over, we have y minus x beta. So we know the y's, we know the x's, we don't know the unknown you know, beta parameters. So we'll never know, truly know, what the error term is, you know. Um, so what we do is we estimate it with our sample, okay? So, and those are called residuals. Residuals are estimates of these error terms. So we have the same y, right? But mine, instead of using this model, we use the least squares model. Now remember, y hat is x times beta hat. And, and that's the, the uh, fitted model. And we hope that these residuals behave like the error terms, or at least the assumptions on the error terms. And if these don't follow these assumptions, you know, at least roughly, then we think that the model assumptions are wrong, and we need to rethink how we model the data. So let's write the residuals in matrix form. So here, and then the, the, the fitted model is H times Y, so where H is the hat matrix, and then we write factor out of Y, and we get I minus H. Now note that it's linear in the Y's, because that's going to play an important part in a second. So let's look at the mean of the residuals. Now we plug in what we know about the residuals, and take the expected value. We factor out this constant. The mean of Y, the vec you know, vector Y, is X beta, right? And then this is zero. So x, the hat matrix times x is x, and i times x is x, and x minus x is zero. Or you could think of that i minus h is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement space of the column space of x. And x is clearly in the column space of x, so when you pre-multiply it by this perpendicular projection matrix, it puts everything to zero, so it, it's zero. Now the variance of, of E, are residuals, so we plug in here. Now the property of variance, you, you factor out this matrix to the left and then you transpose it out to the back, but this is symmetric, so I left off the tick. And, and the variance of Y is sigma squared I. So we, the constant we can take out front, and I times this is, you know, you just get that. And since these are uh, idempotent, you just get this. So this is the variance-covariance matrix of the residuals. Now, this implies that the residuals are multivariate normal with uh, mean zero and variance-covariance matrix this. So let's, a few notes here. Let's look at a specific i. So here is the vector, and we want the ith component. And so the variance of that would be the i i diagonal of this, right? Well, this is a diagonal matrix of ones, and that's a constant, right? So that's where that constant comes from. And one down the diagonal minus the, the i i diagonal of the hat matrix. So this is the variance of the ith component of the, you know, the, the ith residual. Now the covariance, remember this is the variance-covariance matrix. So the, the covariance between i and j is the ith row and j column element. So remember the, the, this would be zero at that spot because it's only ones down the diagonal. And this would be the IH element of this. And of course, the constant comes out front. And don't forget that minus. That's what that is. So this is the covariance between the I and Jth residual. Now, a few more notes from previous video 39 in this playlist, Generalized Linear Models Regression. We showed that the 
the diagonal elements of this um, hat matrix are greater than 1 over n but less than 1 it's between them. From PV24, previous video 24 in this playlist, we showed that the trace of this hat matrix, which means you know add up the diagonal elements, that's equal to k plus 1. Now, if we divide both sides by n, right here, so now we're going to look at the average diagonal element is equal to this, k plus 1 over n. So if we let n go to infinity, the average diagonal element goes to 0. So that means the hi's tend to decrease as n increases, and this is for most i and for large n. So that implies that the variance of the ith component is roughly sigma squared, right? If this tends to go to zero, then one minus something close to zero is roughly one, and one times sigma squared is sigma squared. Now it's for most i, and that's because you can create situations where if you have a data point that's so far removed from the sort of the center of the data, then that diagonal element um, is, stays pretty large compared to the others. Now, since H is idempotent, then the ith, di ith diagonal element would be the ith row times the, the ith column, which is this. And then when you do this, you know, vector multiplication, you get this. But since the hat matrix is symmetric, Hij is equal to Hji. So that says that Hi is equal to this square. And so th these are all positive numbers, right? We're adding up positive things. So that says that Hi has to be bigger than one of them, you know, or equal if they're all zero. So that implies, since as n increases, this tends to decrease, that says the, the, the off-diagonal elements also tend to decrease as n increases. So that implies that the covariance between any two residuals tends to go to zero. And that's for large n and most i not equal to j. Um, so that's a good thing. So the residuals, when n is large enough, the covariance is zero, so they're independent. And the variance is roughly constant. And so what we've just shown that for large n, the residuals are approximately multivariate normal, mean zero, and uh, covariance matrix sigma squared i. So now to investigate the residuals visually, what we do is we plot, we, it's called a residual plot, and we plot the residuals versus the fitted value. Okay, so ignore this for a second. So this is the ideal case. So, um, so this is the fitted value, and this is the residual. And notice that the mean is roughly zero, it fluctuates around zero. It's a constant variance, so it, it's across so that's another assumption and and there's no pattern meaning it looks random they look independent from one another so this is the ideal case and when we deviate from this it means our model assumptions were probably not correct so here in uh, situation B the residuals versus the fitted values we can definitely see a, a curve or a pattern it looks almost quadratic or second order and patterns are not allowed, so this would be a violation. We need to maybe add some more predictor variables or you know, increase them. Instead of linear, we make the x's you know, quadratic or polynomial. And this one is just to follow up here that it, we're not only, it doesn't have to just be quadratic. It could be any, you know, it could be quartique or you know, any pattern that you see in the data is a violation, right? We want it random about this. Now the last one we'll look at is heteroscedasticity. And that's, that means a non-constant variance. Notice that the variance gets bigger as we go across you know, 
the, the fitted value range. Um, here, it's a constant variance, so that's called homoscedastic. Um, and this is heteroscedastic, and that's a violation. And we have ways to deal with all of these that I, hopefully I'll get to in later videos. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.